you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that subscribe button really does help our channel grow, our audience grow. And I really do appreciate it more than, you know, so click that subscribe button, appreciate your support. Now here's the video that you came here for the topic of the day. Listen, it is the biggest story. I believe right now, this second in sports, it is the Michigan football sign stealing scandal. And it's interesting because when I talked about this on Friday, I was, you know, it's not often that I am surprised by a reaction to a story from the general public. I'm not always right. I'm not always wrong, but I usually feel like I have a pretty good idea of what the temperament and what the tone of, of people's feelings are whenever we get a major story like this. Well, I was dead wrong because when this story came out on Friday, it was, oh, everybody steals signs. This isn't a big deal. I didn't even know you couldn't send coaches on the road to scout opposing team. And so I get it. I took I took a little bit of heat for that take because I do think it's, it's a big deal. But I bring it up because over the last 24 to 48 hours, we have gotten some really, really, really big new information. And I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you but if you think this is no big deal, I really can't help you because this is a big story with wide-ranging consequences. And I do think there is one very important thing that, frankly, not enough people are talking about. Now, in terms of the story, everybody knows the details, right? Uh, assistant, uh, not even an assistant coach. He's a, a low-level staffer named Connor Stallions. I don't think it's necessarily relevant to the story, but he was in the Marines. You know, he, I guess on his LinkedIn page, there was something about, you know, being able to decode and decipher whatever. But the bottom line is story comes out Thursday into Friday that a low level staffer is involved in a sign stealing investigation involving Michigan. And so what I want to do is get into some of the new information. And it starts with the bottom line of why this is a, a why this is even an investigation to begin with. Because as I said, to lead this segment, it is not illegal to steal signs. I would guess that virtually every staff in some way, shape, or form does some element of this. What is illegal, though, is to send coaches on the road to scout opposing teams. And let me just tell you, let's get to some of the new details, because to me, this is a big, 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 big deal. Okay, so this is what we learned over the last 24 hours, most of it from a report from ESPN, although also The Athletic did a very good report on this as well. What we found out is that Connor Stallions, a low-level staffer that makes about $55,000 a year, over the last two years since getting hired as a full-time assistant coach at Michigan, two years into three, 2022 season beyond whatever, is that he has purchased tickets to 30-plus games across Big Ten country, most under his name, some under other family members' names, whatever. He sent them to different people. Uh, sometimes he's bought one, sometimes he's bought two. But what's important is 30-plus games, all, as best we can tell, future Michigan opponents, sometimes multiple games over the course of the season. This directly from ESPN. I want to read it so I make sure to get it right. One source told ESPN Stallions bought tickets to five different games at that school over the past three years. Another said it was four games over the past two years. A third said it was nine games over the past three years. Some of the purchases, as I just said, were single tickets, others for multiple people, whatever. So first of all, you got a guy making 55K buying tickets to upwards of 30 games sometimes upwards of four, five, six, seven, eight games over the course of multiple seasons. This is not normal behavior. This is not what every staff is doing. If the ESPN report is accurate, and I have no doubt that it is. Beyond that, and I think there's a couple more important notes to this. One, all of the ticket purchases all essentially follow in the same path. All ticket purchases are made on about the 45 to 50 yard line. All ticket purchases are elevated, raised up so that you have a clear view of the opposing sideline. And it's worth noting that because of current surveillance, we already know, we, apparently, according to both ESPN and The Athletic, we already have proof that, that the people that were using those tickets are seen using their phones to take video. Now, again, I understand it's 2023. Everyone at the stadium uses the phone at some point. 
I get it, Michigan fans. I understand. This does not feel like taking up, picking up your phone to take a selfie. That is not what this feels like at all. It feels like it's a little bit more complex. 30 tickets, bunch of different stadiums, bunch of different teams, multiple games. I'm sorry. This is not normal behavior. And let me also add this. Kind of an interesting note for the people that say, oh, it's all one big coincidence. Connor Stallions bought multiple tickets on both sidelines for last week's Penn State-Ohio State game. This story broke on Thursday. And surprise, surprise, those tickets were not used. So again, what we cannot deny is at the very least there is a pattern of behavior. A guy that frankly probably can't afford tickets is buying tickets. He is giving them out. We have video surveillance of people in those seats taking video with those tickets. And then, oh, by the way, they're all happen to be on the same sideline, same area, uh, opposing sideline, et cetera, right? So if it's just for friends and family, he didn't get them in the nosebleeds, and it doesn't feel like that's the case. I think there's a couple other very interesting elements that came out on Tuesday as well. One, first of all, is that there were multiple videos pulled. Now, a lot of them, admittedly, were from Ohio State accounts or Ohio State media or whatever. They're doing their job just like everybody else. And what I would say is this guy does not have the normal um, communication patterns, if you will, of a low-level staffer. There's multiple videos shown, and maybe it just so happens that it's all a coincidence. But one, the first drive, of the Ohio state game last year. Now, admittedly, Ohio state scored on that drive. So that is worth noting, but the first drive of that game, you can see Ohio state audible into something. And he Connor stallions, a, 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 again, not even a position coach, not a coordinator. He starts going crazy and signaling something. The entire sideline starts signaling it. Michigan changes his defense. Like this is not normal behavior for somebody who's not the coordinator. Speaking of which, multiple videos, him talking to Mike McDonald, basically being his right-hand man, the the Michigan coordinator two seasons ago when Michigan made the playoff in 2021. Then in 2022, uh, him talking to Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator, a year ago. Again, not normal behavior on game day for a low-level staffer to have the ear of the defensive coordinator. That is not normal. I'm sorry, Michigan fans. Don't try to sell me. It is not normal. And so when you add it all up, something is not right here. And I would also say this too. And I said, and I know I've said it two or three times, but I do think it is worth repeating here, is that this is a guy that was making 55 k a year. This is not a guy that can just afford to buy tickets upon tickets upon tickets upon tickets for just friends and family. Like, I think that's an important element of this here as well. Just so happens to buy tickets all over the Midwest. Just so happens to buy tickets for teams that all happen to be future Michigan opponents. It feels like more than a coincidence. And again, this feels like a bigger story. And the reason it's a bigger story, and I want to get to this, I want to make sure that I hammer this home. Because I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I'm the only one that sees it. It is a bigger story not because it's sign stealing, because it is an in-depth, elaborate plan to go to opposing team stadiums and get intel and advantage that you can't get by being in the stadium on the other sideline, as in if, if you're playing them as an opponent and you can't get on TV, you can't get on game film, you can't get on anything. And so this is an integ. First of all, first of all, just broken NCA rule. And I'm not Mr. Like, oh, you got to play by the NCA rules. I get all that. I get the NCAA rule books outdated, but at the same time, they did break a rule. But more importantly, and this is the part, if you take nothing else out of this, I think this is an important part that I haven't heard anybody else really talk about. We now live in the sports gambling era of sports, and everybody's taking money from sports books. I get it. We have a partnership ourselves. I like, like That's not new. That's not a new piece of information. But I just bring it up to very simply say, that the one thing you cannot do and why this is a big deal and why the Big Ten is investigating and why the NCA is investigating is because you can't put the integrity of the game into question. If you're a Michigan fan, you don't have to go far down the road. Jamison Williams just came off a suspension for the Detroit Lions. Why? Because he bet on something somewhere. Like, like he was suspended 
because there was an integrity issue with him playing in the NFL. Same with multiple Detroit Lions. You can agree, you can disagree, but everybody has to be extra cautious in this era. Iowa, Iowa State are missing players because of betting that was tracked, that was deemed to be some sort of integrity issue, and that is exactly what this is. Michigan fans, I don't know how much Jim Harbaugh knew, how bad it really was, how much Connor Stallions really picked up, but anything that calls into question the integrity of the game that gives Michigan an unfair advantage, and I'm sorry, sending your assistants all over the Midwest to scout teams does, that is a big deal. And so now, I'll be blunt, I'm just curious to see what happens next, and this is one I don't know that I have a really good answer on, because this is so unprecedented. This has never happened before that I know of at the college level. Now, we had, you know, uh, Spygate in the NFL But even Spygate, that was using cameras in the stadiums, all this, all that. This is going on the road. This is coordinated. This is multiple stadiums all over the country, buying tickets, giving them out, taking video, getting it back. You can't watch the videos that surfaced on Tuesday and say it's no big deal. Everybody does this. If it is, you know, find it for me. Find me the Ohio State sideline. Find me the Penn State sideline. Find me the Michigan State sideline. Find me the Alabama sideline of a low-level staffer getting in the ear of Jim Knowles at Ohio State or whomever, Kevin Steele at Alabama. It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. And so this is a big deal. You can't tell me it's not, and I'm just fascinated to see what happens next. Now, again, I'm not smart enough to know what the NCAA is going to do because the NCAA marches to the beat of its own drum. And this is also a unique circumstance because Michigan was already being investigated for other stuff. By the way, Michigan fans, don't tell me, oh, the NCAA is out to get us. The NCAA is not out to get you. Harbaugh was stupid with the cheeseburger stuff, then basically lied about it. Like, he was so bad in that investigation. He brought on a lot of the problems himself. And then this, this is a big deal because everyone in the league knew about it. Like, like so it, the NCAA isn't out to get Michigan. It's that everybody got pissed off because they're egregiously breaking the rules. And so we'll see what happens next. It is worth noting. Jim Harbaugh can deny, deny. And by the way, I'm a Harbaugh guy. For the record, I picked Michigan to win the national championship. I said three weeks ago they were the best team in college football when everyone's else talking Georgia or Texas or whoever. I've said since day one, I think Michigan's the best team in the country. But at the same time, you cannot tell me this is nothing. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with Jim Harbaugh. Remember. They have coaches responsibility rules, which basically say if you're the head coach, even if you didn't know, you should know. It's obvious the NCAA and Jim Harbaugh are not getting along. And so we will see what happens from there. Ultimately, I don't know if Harbaugh, listen, I still think Harbaugh is going to coach every game this year. I think there's going to be a cloud, but when they win the way that they do, you know, people will move past it. You know, the initial report came out Thursday. Everybody had the hot takes on Friday. Then Saturday, they destroyed Michigan State. And it was kind of like, well, they didn't need to steal signs on this one. They're just way, way, way better than Michigan State. So we'll see what happens as time goes on. But at some point, Michigan is going to be punished for this. We'll see what happens. And I stick by what I said on Friday. I, I, I really do believe this is Harbaugh's last year. I'm not rooting for it. I love him. He's good for college football. He's good for Michigan. He's good for the Big Ten. But it just feels like stuff is starting to add up, whether he knew, whether he didn't know, good, bad, whatever. It's just starting to add up. It's starting to have a little cloud over the program. And listen, if he wins a national championship, if he wins a third straight Big Ten title, he beats Ohio State for a third straight year, he is going to have his suitors. So we'll see what happens. But please, 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 please do not tell me this is no big deal because it is a huge deal for the reason that I mentioned. All right, so we're 